sixth grade, module three, lesson eight, classwork. Example one, ordering rational numbers from least to greatest. Sam has $10 in the bank. He owes his friend, Hank, $2.25. He owes his sister, $1.75. Consider the three rational numbers related to this story of Sam's money. Write and order them from least to greatest. So first, let's just write out the numbers that we have. So we have $10, so I'm just gonna leave that as 10. You could put in zero hundredths if you wanted to. I'll go ahead and do that. Then we have, he owes his friend Hank $2.25. So if you owe it, then it's gonna be negative. So negative two and 25 hundredths, and he owes his sister $1.75, so negative one and 75 hundredths. Now we need to order those from least to greatest. So if we were to put it on a number line, here we'd have zero, 10 would be somewhere right there, like if we had five there, negative five, negative 10. Negative two and 25 hundredths would be kind of in the middle right there. And then negative one and 75 hundredths would be, be around there. So from least to greatest, we have the furthest away to the left from zero is negative two and 25 hundredths. Then we have negative one and 75 hundredths. And lastly, we have 10. So there's our order. Exercises two through four. For each problem, list the rational numbers that relate to each situation. Then order them from least to greatest and explain how you made your determination. Number two, during their most recent visit to the optometrist, the eye doctor, Kadisha and her sister Beth had their vision tested. Kadisha's vision in her left eye was negative one and 50 hundredths and her vision in her right eye was the opposite number. Beth's vision was negative one in her left eye and positive 25 hundredths in her right eye. So what we're going to do is list the rational numbers and then we're gonna order them and then we're gonna explain. So we're just looking for the rational numbers. So here's a rational number, negative one and 50 hundredths. And then her right eye was the opposite. So the opposite of neg negative one and 50, one, uh, Negative one and 50 hundredths would be one and 50 hundredths. Then we also have negative one and positive 25 hundredths. So I don't need to put the positive sign. If there is no sign, we just know it's positive. Okay, so we're gonna order these. The number that would be furthest to the left from zero, let's start, let's pull out the negative numbers. The smallest would be negative one and 50 hundredths or negative one. Well, negative one and 50 hundredths would be further from zero. So this would be first, then the next negative number. Now we just need to list order 25 hundredths and one and 50, 50 hundredths. So then we'd have 25 hundredths and one and 50 hundredths. So there's our order. And then we need to explain how we got that. So we can say negative one and 50 hundredths is the farthest to the left from zero on a number line. Negative one would be next. And we can say 25 hundredths is, uh, there's multiple ways that we could explain this, but I'm going to say that 25 hundredths is smaller than one and 50 hundredths because it is closer to zero. Number three, 
There are three pieces of mail in Miss Thomas's mailbox, a bill from the phone company for, for $38.12, a bill from the electric company for $67.55, and a tax refund check for $25.89. So it reminds you a bill is money that you owe, tax refund is money that you receive. So a bill, something that we owe, would be negative. So we have negative 38 and 12 hundredths. A bill from the electric company, so negative 67 and 55 hundredths. And then a tax refund check, so you're getting that money back, you're receiving it, so positive $25.89. Okay, so if we were to order these on a number line, the smallest and the furthest to the left from zero would be negative 67 and 55 cents then negative 38 and 12 hundredths, then 25 and 89 hundredths. So explain how we knew that. We can say that negative 67 and 55 hundredths is the farthest to the left on the number line. So it is the least negative 38 and 12 hundredths comes next and finally 25 and 89 hundredths is the greatest. There's multiple ways to explain that. That's just one explanation. Number four, Monica, Jack, and Destiny measured their arm lengths for an experiment in science class. They compared their arm lengths to a standard length of 22 inches. The listing below shows in inches how each student's arm length compares to 22 inches. So we have negative one eighth, one and three fourths, and negative one half. If we wanted to draw a number line, you don't have to. And we have, let's do, put negative one there. So negative one half would be about right there. And then negative one eighth would probably be about right there. And one and three fourths, so there's one, one and three fourths would be about over there. So the smallest would be negative one half then negative one eighth, and then one and three fourths. And then just explain that number line that we have. So kind of what we were doing before, say um, negative one half is the furthest to the left on the number line, so it's the smallest, then next comes negative one eighth, and the largest is one and three fourths because it's the furthest to the right on the number line. Something like that. Example two. Jason is entering college and has opened a checking account, which he will use for college expenses. His parents gave him $200 to deposit into the account. Jason wrote a check for $85 to pay for his calculus book and a check for $25.34 to pay for miscellaneous school supplies. Write the three rational numbers related to the balance in Jason's checking account in order from greatest to least. Okay, so parents gave him $200, so he's positive $200. Then he wrote a check for $85, so he took that out of his account, so he's down $85. And then he pays, writes another check for $25.34, so another negative $25.34. Write them from greatest to least. So this time it's really important on these that we pay attention. So this says greatest to least before we were doing least to greatest. So this is gonna be in the opposite order. So if I have zero here, I'm gonna put 200 all the way down there. So maybe that's 100. And then there's negative 100, so negative 85 would be about right there. And negative 25 and 34 hundredths is about right there. But 
this time, we're going from greatest to least. So our greatest is 200, then negative 25 and 34 hundredths, and finally negative 85. Exercises five and six. For each problem, list the rational numbers that relate to each situation in order from greatest to least. Explain how you arrived at that order. Okay, list the rational numbers. So again, from greatest to least, the following are current monthly bills that he must pay. So they're all negative because they're bills that he has to pay. So $122 to cable and internet. So he's down $122 for that. Negative $73.45 for gas and electric. And then negative $45 for his cell phone bill. So if we were to plot those, let's see. I'm gonna put zero here since we don't have any positive. So, I'll do negative 50, negative 100, negative 150. So negative 122 would be in between 100 and 150. Negative 73 and 45 hundredths would be about in the middle of there. And then negative 45 is gonna be pretty close to negative 50. So here, the closer to zero we are, the greater we are because we're talking in negatives. So the greatest here is negative 45, and then we're gonna go in the opposite direction that we normally would since we're going greatest to least. So we have negative 45, negative 73 and 45 hundredths, and then negative 122. So we can say, that if we want to explain all the numbers are negative because what's his name? Mr. McGraw owes the money Negative 45 is the closest to zero, so it is the largest. Next is negative 73 and 45 hundredths, and the smallest is negative 122. Okay, and then the last one. Negative one-third, zero, negative one-fifth, and one-eighth. Okay, so we're again ordering from greatest to least. So the biggest number here, I'm gonna start with the only positive number we have is one-eighth, so that's gonna be the biggest number. Then we would have zero. Now we just need to decide which one is greater, negative one-third, or negative one-fifth. So negative one-fifth is greater than negative one-third because negative one-fifth would be closer to zero on a number line. So you would rather um, O, for example, um, this might be like 20%. Negative one-fifth is equal to 20% versus around 33%. So you'd rather O 20% then 33%. If that didn't make sense to you, ignore that I said that. Okay, so if we need to explain it, we can say that the farthest to the right on the number line is one eighth. So it is the 
largest. Zero is next. Negative one fifth is larger than negative one third because it instead of it, let's clarify what we're talking about. Because negative one fifth is closer to zero on the number line. And that is all.